This is Sunday Focus, a weekly public affairs program that looks at the topics affecting our society and the people who are making a change in the community each and every day. The people who have vision for the next generation. Sunday Focus presents new challenges for us, keeping you informed with topics of local and regional interest. Now the host of Sunday Focus, Christine Manica. Hello and good morning. Welcome back to another edition of Sunday Focus. So many great events are going around the Sioux Empire this year. And one of them, it's a multicultural celebration that's become a huge tradition in the town of Wagner. The goal of this event, it's simple, bringing people together in a place where everyone feels welcomed. It's all about the 605 Unity Jam. It's going to be located in Wagner at Wagner Lake Park. And we have a couple of people to tell us more about this exciting event on June 9th. We have Dana Sanderson and he brought along two students. We have Jennifer Barnett and also Presley Slaba. Good morning you guys. Welcome. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Yeah, good morning. Good morning to you guys. Welcome back to the show Jennifer and Dana and welcome Presley. Good to have you on here. Lots of great things about the Unity 605 Dram. It's going to be a great event and let's first talk about how the 605 Unity Jam got started. Dana, I'm going to start with you with that question. Well, it started off with just a simple comment. Uh, I was visiting with someone who plays a lot of music and they were talking about uh, there's just no place to play anymore, and we started talking about that, and then pretty soon it started blending into other things. And then since I had been at the Wagner School for 40 years as a counselor, I started talking about some of the things I've noticed that's changed as well. And one of the things I wanted to do was try to bring the community closer together, and pretty soon we formed a group, and then our focus became that, Yeah. Uh, how, how to do that and what can we do because we like to – make an impact, something positive. Uh, there's too many times that's missing in today's world. So we focused on how can we bring people together and make things happen. That's, that's how it all got started. Yeah, absolutely. I think I remember last year you sharing a couple of stories about different cultures that you've learned from over the years and even the changes that you have seen in Wagner and in South Dakota to bring this 605 UD jam together. Can you tell us more about that? Well, I came to Wagner uh, to serve as a counselor for Native students. And from that, I created uh, or was able to create uh, lots of friendships over the years. And what ended up happening is uh, one of the things that I've I've repeated several times probably uh, where I, or whenever I have the opportunity. But a friend of mine once said, uh, if you've met one Native person, you've met one. If you've met one white person, you've met one. Mm-hmm. And that has stuck with me because too often we're, we're willing to paint a whole group of people a certain way. And um, for years, uh, that's been a problem in, in our state with trying to, to have these things. Uh, turn, we, 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 I guess basically what we want we want people to look at each other as individuals, enjoy each other as individuals. Yeah, absolutely. And that's how you basically got involved with the 605 UD Jam, just to say, hey, we need to bring people together with a great event that celebrates everybody. Yes. And and then this has managed to do that. We've, we've got people that, uh, in fact, I still, uh, I think of the times when we first got started uh, a few years ago, uh, trying to get people to come and just experience being together. Sure. Um, and now it seems to be like um, some of our our best days are, are when this event comes and people look forward to it. So it's really a, a good thing for our community. So how important is the 605 UD Jam to the community? Well, uh, Wagner being a, a rural town, uh, you've got Labor Day as a big event, and then you kind of go the rest of the year with... with uh, looking forward to things related to the school. But in the summertime, um, this creates an opportunity for people to come together when when there's uh, great weather. And of course, we've now involved a nice variety of cultural activities and things to go along with this to keep hitting the theme, uh, unity. And, and I think people are starting to say, yes, this really does matter and this will make a difference in our community. This is the fourth annual 605 Unity Jam, and it's hard to believe it's been 
roughly four years since this event has been created. How does that make you feel just seeing it grow from the first event to what's coming up on June 9th? Well, I think uh, pride, I guess, probably is the biggest thing because, and I don't mean in, in just the idea, but the fact that people want to come and they look forward to coming. And I, I, to me, that's something that everybody can be proud of. And uh, in our community with with the way things are in the world now, this gives people a chance to come and just enjoy being together without all the other things that sometimes creep into events or activities that, that seem to go on. So it's, it's something very good for our community. Absolutely. Now, does the 605 Unity Jam have a mission statement or pillars to go along with the event? Well, basically, we have we have several things we're trying to accomplish, but probably the biggest comes down to is the purpose of our event. And what we've settled on is a single statement to increase cultural awareness, understanding, acceptance and appreciation of all cultures. And, and, and then everything else kind of goes around that because we want to focus on our community. We want to focus on um, coming in and seeing how, what kind of people live here. Um, it would be nice if people would visit, maybe want to return visit. Maybe they even might want to consider moving to Wagner because it's a, it's a nice community. Absolutely. Now, I was told that uh, there's something called a Unity Buffalo that people can see when they go to the 605 Unity Jam. Your face just lit up when I said that, the Unity Buffalo. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about that one, Dana? Uh, well, what, what that's about is back when this idea was first presented to the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, and also to the Yankton Sioux Tribe. And what we talked about was the importance of finding ways to work together. And up to this point, there's very few opportunities that have, that have happened to do that. So what we, what we did is we obtained uh, two, two buffalo that are basically made out of ceramic uh, material. They're about the size of a full-size buffalo. And it went to the fifth grade students at school. And I said, why don't you take and imagine if you could make this buffalo uh, into the equivalent of a, an art project. How would you like to see your buffalo designed? Right? That created opportunities to have conversations with students about um, their involvement and, and what the buffalo might mean. And then all of a sudden, the name Unity Buffalo became the topic. We asked kids to create designs. They... And then we went to a couple of professional artists and asked them to take those ideas and put those into, into use. And this would be a constant reminder that we can work together if we choose to. And so we basically said to the Yankton Sioux Tribe and the Chamber of Commerce, each of you will own one part of each side. So that way nothing can be decided unless you work together about where they're going to be located, what we're going to do with them, those kinds of things. And... Um, the artwork turned out to be very nice and people are choosing to come and take a look at them. And we're hoping uh, that this is a way to draw people to come to Wagner. Absolutely. And I'm looking at one of the pictures right now of the Unity Buffalo and it's gorgeous. It is just, there's a lot of color going on. You have blue, you have some oranges and red. It just really represents Culture and art here. Oh, you're showing me more pictures right now. Okay, let's That's see. That's actually two buffalo. Okay. But it's different sides because four different designs from four different students were taken into account. Awesome. This is, ooh, I see Crazy Horse and Mount Rushmore on there, the South Dakota state flag. These buffalo, they're, they're amazing. When you look back, Dana, and you think about when you were asking students what the Unity Buffalo meant to them, can you recall anything of what they said? Well, I was really amazed and really happy to find that fifth grade students were thinking into the future. And it was obvious right away that they were taking great pride in having something like this in our community. And the fact that it was based off of designs by fifth graders um, and then, of course, we had conversations, and it was amazing to hear what students think about and what they'd like for the community. And that's where this event has it's been driven by some of those ideas. So that's, it's something that's really a, a good thing, like I said, for our community. 
Absolutely. If you were just listening, we are talking about the 605 Unity Jam. That's going to be at the Wagner Lake Park in Wagner on Sunday, June 9th. We're talking about cultures and heritage. What's your story? What's your background, Dana? We'll start with you first before I know, girls, you're waiting patiently. But Dana, let's hear about your cultural background. Well, I grew up on a on a farm uh, between Aberdeen and Watertown. Um, I went off to college and got my very first job out at Eagle Butte, uh, Shine River Reservation. And, and then from there, basically had an opportunity to come to Wagner and th- thought that this would just be a job for a year or so. And then 40 years went by uh, because the people were so welcoming, friendly. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, it, it was something that you always hope for when you get a job that you'll have the opportunity to have those feelings. And, um, and I ended up staying and now that I'm retired, I'm still staying and, <laughs> and trying to find ways to bring the community together just like I did when I was a school counselor. Man, those 40 years went by quick, Uh, didn't it? Very fast, very fast. (laughs) Yes, they do. That's why you need to take care of them. Absolutely. So we do have students in the studio with us. We have returning for her second year, Jennifer Barnett. And then we also have Presley Slaba with us this morning. Good morning, girls. Good morning. Hello. Uh, Hello. Let's hear a little bit about yourselves, where you're from, where to go to school, what are you interested in studying and stuff like that? Jennifer, we'll start with you. Okay, so, I mean, I was born in Wagner. Um, I mean, I guess touching on your question of culture. Yeah. Um, my, uh, I am Czech and German and Irish. Um, but growing up in Wagner on the reservation, um, Honestly, I feel like I'm a lot more connected to the Native culture the more I have been exposed to it. It has become a big part of my identity, um, and I try to involve myself in um, their culture in school and outside of school. Um, And so growing up on the reservation has meant a lot to me. Um, I guess touching on um, what I want to do, I plan on attending Washington University in St. Louis for political science, but um, because of my background, I actually hope to get involved with some Native groups on campus, and I want to minor in some Indigenous studies um, because I would like to return to a uh, reservation. So. Wonderful. Presley, hello. Hi. Um, so, like Jenny, I um, have grown up in Wagner, and i um, um, my dad is from the area and my mom is from Nebraska. So they have both grown up near or around reservations. And, um, I think that, um, like Jenny said, growing up around the native culture has been a definite influence. Um, just like, cause I have talked to people from different areas and it's, um, crazy how different their perspective of things are. Mm-hmm. And so when talking to other people, it just made me realize that I have like a wonderful opportunity to learn more about the different cultures. And um, I, my ethnicities are, um, I know I'm Czech, like German, Irish, um, and a bunch of other things but <laughs> I'm not quite certain of. Um, and for the future, I'm looking into being a veterinarian. And I've got a couple different schools on my mind, but um, I'll be making that decision entering my senior year of high school. So, yeah. Awesome. So I want to ask you this question first, Presley. How did you get involved with the 605 Unity Jam? So um, originally Dana came into my history class and um, like presented this to our whole class. And um, he talked about how um, this... Um, event is unifying our cultures and how it would be a great opportunity to get involved in our community. And I just felt like um, this would be a great opportunity to um, like put myself out there and try and help and be um, involved. And I think this event is just um, a wonderful opportunity for anyone in our community in general to come and have a great time and learn something because You learn something new every day, and I've learned many things by working with Dana and all the other people that are involved in this, so. 
Awesome. Jennifer? So I remember when this event first came, and I remember being very thrilled upon hearing about it. Um, I went to the first one, and I stayed there the whole time. Uh, I mean, it was exactly what I w had wanted in our community. Um, I love learning about different cultures. I feel like it is so important in people's characters. Um, I mean, it is important to who they are. Mm -hmm. And you can't understand someone fully until you try to learn about them. Um, and this gives an opportunity to learn about your neighbors. And so I wanted to be involved to kind of advocate for all these different cultures. Um, I mean, the Native American culture, although it's so present on the reservation, hasn't really been that present in town. Um, so just last year was the first powwow ever held in Wagner um, through, the, through this event. And I loved having an opportunity to be involved in that, you know, kind of monumental moment for the tribe there and for Wagner um, and to be involved in the community in that way. Um, to bring other people, to bring people together um, in an area where everyone just wants to learn about each other. I mean, there is no competition. Mm -hmm. There is no, um, no one's rooting for another person's downfall. At, like that might happen at sports. Sports is really all we have to get together in Wagner besides Labor Day. And I loved the opportunity that we had where people could gather because in such a small town, there really aren't many opportunities for that. So I was thankful to have a reason to meet new people and just learn. I think that's wonderful. I think that's a wonderful aspect to look at it. Obviously, the world, it's different. It's different even from the last time you and I spoke, Jennifer. Do you, too, see a divide when it comes to cultures? Maybe it's in your community a little bit maybe it's outside of wagner absolutely i mean i feel like it's present everywhere it's kind of hard to avoid um i mean it's something that's taught that because these people have different beliefs or different morals that they might be inferior and partly just because we just don't understand um i mean i think most judgment stems from misunderstanding um, and this kind of gives an opportunity to, I guess, overcome that misunderstanding mm -hmm. and place yourself in a in a place of vulnerability um, to be able to learn and admit that you don't know. Um, and in Wagner, I mean, even in school, there, if you look at friend groups, it's mainly divided by the culture. I mm. mean, there is a lot of solely white friend groups and solely native friend groups, and it's hard to kind of intermix. Um, it's just kind of set out that way. And I feel like this kind of is a stepping block for changing that. Um, and I feel like we kind of put ourselves in those situations because we see the outside world. Mm -hmm. Um, doing the same. Uh, we're so used to that being the way that it is. Um, so we just kind of set along that, ba set ourselves along those boundaries, and we're too afraid to be the ones to take that step towards unity. Well said, Presley. Um, well, I was, when you first asked, I was thinking of, um, Dana was talking to us on the way up here, and he was talking about how when he first came, there was a major divide and how people did not get along, and it was just a terrible situation. And he said that looking today, it's a lot better. So um, compared to in the past, it has definitely grown, mm -hmm. um, but definitely there is there is a divide, and um, I think it mainly stems from people being afraid of change and um, people um, being ignorant and not willing to learn about other things. And there's also, um, so like Jenny was talking about a powwow earlier, um, and um, I've always heard of powwows, like when I'm growing up, like, oh, um, some of my, the native um 
other kids in my class are like, oh, yeah, I'm going to a powwow this weekend. And I've always been interested in it, but I've never, like, actually taken the steps to go and look. And I feel like um, another point of divide would be that if – because I was always afraid because if I went, I might not have been welcome. And so Mm -hmm. that stems from – the fear of change. And I just um, believe that this Unity Jam is allowing opportunities for um, different cultures to look at um, other things that they might have been afraid of before. Dana, you have some smart students in this uh, room. I'm sitting here, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting here feeling, uh, gee, I'm really glad these students are from Wagner. <laughs> but you know, uh, when you comment on that uh, powwow back uh, in the beginning, mm-hmm. we had uh, someone come and demonstrate a native dance, and I had somebody else walk by right after that was done and had tears in their eyes, and I thought maybe they got hurt, and I asked them, "What are you okay? Their response was, I'm not hurt. Um, I just never thought this would happen here. Mm. That's kind of a big statement. Yeah. And so that's why you start to see uh, a youth powwow. The youth are the future. And so uh, when I was visiting with uh, some of the folks from the, uh, from the tribe about how do we go about doing this, and um, boy, talk about excitement, uh, <laughs> because that's big change. And I think when these, these students talk about change, that is something we're all afraid of. And one thing that I have talked about is the fact that we've all lived together for so many years, and yet there's a lot of people, mm-hmm. uh, white people, never been to a powwow. We have lots of people, native people, never went to check days. Yeah. They both are guilty of doing the same thing, uh, not taking those steps to learn about each other. And when you do, you get a chance for communication. And when you get some communication, you find out, oh, we have a lot more in common than you thought. Absolutely. So, but yeah, when uh, she talks about uh, our conversations about change, 1975 is when I came to Wagner. So uh, the world in Wagner was clearly different than it is now. So it's it's at least on the right track. Absolutely. If you are just listening, being joined in the studio by Dana Sanderson. We also have students Jennifer Barnett and we also have Presley Slava talking about the upcoming 605 Unity Jam in Wagner on Sunday, June 9th. All right. Let's talk about the activities for everyone to enjoy during the 605 Unity Jam. Tell us more about it. Jennifer, you can start off. So some activities that we have are the youth powwow, of course. Uh, there's a teen spike ball tournament. We have the cardboard box or boat regatta. <laughs> um, the Czech lachi eating contest. And then Presley can say more of yep. that. So um, other things we have are um, arts and crafts vendors and food trucks. We have the youth fishing clinic where they teach um, kids about fishing. And then they have the fishing derby. And then they have adult and teen cornhole tournaments. And then traditional native and Czech dance demonstrations. So, And there's lots of other things. So if you decide to come, there are lots of opportunities to do things. So. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be another fun event for the 605 Unity Jam. What's your favorite part about the 605 Unity Jam? I, um, I honestly, I'm a sucker for food. I love, <laughs> I love all I the... I someone was going to say food. <laughs> You're a sucker for food, yep, yes. Yep, and I love all the different, um, because they also bring the culture into the food. Mm-hmm. So, like, um, I remember I tried Indian tacos for the first time at the Unity Jam last year, and I, like, thoroughly enjoyed them. And um, I ended up talking to the lady that was making them, and I asked her, like, about how she learned. And so I learned a lot about that. And then um, I uh, have grown up on kolaches. My grandma loves to make them. Mm-hmm. And um, so I saw lots of other um especially Native Americans trying them for the first time. And so um, I feel like the food really, um, I love food. So, <laughs> And then it brings cultures together as well. That's kind of hard. I mean, I love all aspects of it. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I think I like the powwow and the Czech dancers the most. I mean, there are so many things that are similar in different cultures, Um I mean, we share so much in common, whether it's dancing, food, um, certain um, 
arts Mm -hmm. and whatever music um and there's like so many cultures find fulfillment in those so to be able to see how um they use dancing to represent their culture i mean it's really beautiful to see the differences um and last year i remember there were some native dancers trying to um learn how to dance from the Czech dancers and you know they were just sharing um their dances with each other and it was such a beautiful moment there's a lot of great things with the 605 UE jam again it's on Sunday June 9th at Wagner Lake Park we can't emphasize that date enough and before we let you all go we have to ask this question why should anyone attend the 605 UE jam if someone is new to town, new to South Dakota, and they hear 605 Unity Jam, what does that mean? Why should they go? Um, Well, I mean, of course, as we've talked, I think it's a great way to be exposed to um, different cultures. Um, That's the best way you can learn is, I mean, it um, fosters multiple cultures. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go there and you can experience all of them. and it opens up conversations with people that you wouldn't normally talk with. And like Dana said, you know, um, knowing that you have a lot more in common and there's so much more uh, to look past. Like you don't, you shouldn't dwell on your differences. There's so much more that you have in common than what you have that's different. Also, we have some live music as well. So if you're into that, um, lots of great live music and it includes different cultures. So we have... Kara Hannon, uh, she sings Christian music. Uh, Uncle Goy and the Boys sings country. There's Two Eats and a Blonde, Maggie in the Meantime, and that's Celtic music. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep, Mariachi con Amigos, which is mariachi. Uh, Kobe Jordan is pop music. And then Mogan's Heroes is 60s, 70s, 80s music. So it fulfills a lot of different genres and has something for everyone. Um, and... That's very important in our event, too, to mm-hmm. bring different cultures together. Absolutely. Presley, why should people come to the 605 Unity Jam? Um, I really think that, um, honestly, there's, like, so many opportunities for people of all ages. So we've got, like, um, the kids, uh, what was it called, the boat regatta? Mm-hmm. So where they build their own boats and out of cardboard and duct tape and race across the lake. That's an opportunity for kids. And then you've got opportunities for teens, like the spike ball. You've got, um, like, adults so they can listen to the music and uh, things for people of all ages. So I think it's a good thing to get people out of the house and um, off their technology, which is definitely on the rise. Um <laughs> So I think it's a great opportunity to bring cultures together as well. Like um, Jenny said earlier, I think the um, like the powwow and the dance demonstrations just open people's eyes to all of the culture that's going on around them that they may not have um, realized was happening before. Awesome. Again, it's Dana Sanderson. We also have students Jennifer Barnett and also Presley Slaba. Dana, anything else you want to add before we wrap up? Well, I thought I'd mention that uh, everything that I'm involved with, I try to get more miles off of those <laughs> ideas, if at all possible. Yeah. And one of the things that's happening this year, the farmer's market is being added as a kickoff as part of the event to bring folks that might not come mm-hmm. to an event like this. And then also the Boys and Girls Club is offering uh, students a chance to come in and adults will help them build a boat because many times kids want to participate, but they can't mm-hmm. because just the duct tape alone costs too much. So we're providing those kinds of things for them to be a part of. So it, it's something really fun and also something that you get a chance to learn how to do something. And uh, you put all this into one day event, it's a lot of things. And I think most people uh, are often looking for something to do. And all you really got to do is invest the time to drive over to Wagner. You don't pay anything to attend. Uh, it, lots of music, lots of culture, lots of enjoyment. Once again, the 605 Unity Jam is happening in Wagner at the Wagner Lake Park on Sunday, June 9th. Thank you guys so much for joining us this morning. Can't wait for the event and good luck. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.